<clears throat> All right, this uh, practice video is going to talk about the conservation of momentum, and we're going to specifically apply it to explosion type problems. And uh, we're going to understand what the conservation of momentum is, and then we're going to uh, do a practice problem. And uh, we'll be able to explain things like when a cannon is shot, or as you can see in the little cartoon here, when somebody's shooting a gun and there's the recoil uh, of the gun. Uh, and so uh, we're going to deal with problems that are momentum, conservation of momentum problems that are specifically explosion type problems. Uh, first of all, conservation of momentum, how does it work? Well, we know according to Newton's third law, we know that uh, uh, forces come in force pairs. And so if two things are interacting with each other or acting upon each other, uh, the force in one direction is going to be equal to the force in the other direction. Newton's third law, action, reaction, forces are equal and opposite. So if we know that the forces are the same, and if we know that the uh, times are going to be the same because they are acting on each other, uh, the force of a gun on a bullet is going to be the same amount of time as the force of the bullet acting back on the gun, those times are going to be the same. And so they're acting on each other. So we know that the Fs are going to be the same and the Ts are going to be the same. So therefore, uh, we know that the total impulse, force times time, uh, is going to be equal uh, on both sides. And so um, from there, we learned already uh, in this uh, unit that impulse is equal to momentum. So if we know that force times time on both sides is going to be the same, ultimately uh, the momentum in either side of the action is going to be the same. The mass times velocity uh, 1, M1, V1 uh, would be the uh, momentum before the collision and then the M2, V2 would be equal to the momentum afterwards. And so as far as getting to the conservation of momentum and kind of understanding how it works and why it works, this is it. The forces are the same, the times are the same, the impulses are the same, and therefore we can substitute momentum in for impulse, and we have M1, V1 equal to M2, V2. Let's see how that plays out in a practice problem. It says there's a six, I'm sorry, there's a three kilogram gun uh, that shoots 0 .007 kilogram bullets. If the bullets are shot with a velocity of 100 meters per second, what is the gun's recoil velocity? And if you're uh, not familiar with this recoil term, um, I think I'm going to add a link onto the, onto the video here that will send you to an interesting video uh, that's kind of funny that shows the recoil of a shotgun. Okay, but really the recoil is just the, the velocity uh, backwards uh, on the gun um, as it's uh, shooting the bullet forwards. So let's see what we have here. Whenever I do one of these problems, uh, usually we're uh, going to draw a little picture. And uh, really we're dealing with two things here. This is my detailed picture of a gun. Okay, not very good. Uh, and here's my detailed picture of a bullet. Not very good either. But um, we're going to look for the momentum of the gun and the momentum of the bullet. And we're going to set those equal to each other because of the conservation of momentum. Once we know that we can set them equal to each other, then we can find the different variables that we need. So it says there's a three kilogram gun. So really, uh, the momentum, we'll call this M1, V1, the momentum, uh, M times V of the gun, is going to be equal to M2, uh, V2. And so if we're starting to fill things in here, we know we have a three kilogram gun, so we're going to put that underneath the mass of the gun. Um, it shoots 0 .007 kilogram bullets. It says if the bullets are shot with a velocity of 150 meters per second, so that's going to be V2. And we want to know what is the recoil velocity. So the recoil velocity is going to be the velocity backwards uh, on the gun. And so we're going to leave that as V1. So we can set those equal to each other. So we have 3 kilograms times V1 is equal to 0 .007 kilograms times 150 meters per second. Now, uh, hopefully, some simple algebra here. We can uh, multiply these together, uh, and then we're going to go ahead divide both sides by 3 kilograms. Right. So we're going to divide both sides by 3 kilograms. Uh, when we do that, we find that the velocity of the gun, the recoil velocity of the gun, is 0.35 meters per second. That would be in the direction of the gun. So that's a, a simple, simple problem of how we would relate the explosion equation 
where the gun and the bullet are interacting with each other. We know the uh, M and V of the bullet is going to be equal to the M and V of the, of the gun.